バイリンガルウェブマガジンディッグ東京のディレクターを務めるカズーこと G カズオペニアです。英語力がどんどんつく学習法へようこそ。ディッグ東京は8つのカテゴリーのコラムを日本語と英語で併記しているウェブマガジンです。英語力がどんどんつく学習法は僕がこれまでの翻訳や通訳の仕事を通して培ったさまざまな英語上達についてのノウハウをレッスン形式にまとめたもので、読む、書く、聞く、話すという4つのスキルが身につくと思います。ディグ東京のビジネスやライフスタイルに関するコラムのテキストを用いるのでビジネスですぐに使える英語力や旅行や海外での生活に役立つ英会話力がつきますディグ東京のテキストと YouTube の動画を使ったこのレッスンを繰り返すことで大学受験のための英語力はもちろんのこと TOEIC、TOEFL、英検などの試験のための英語力もどんどんつくことでしょう同じコラムの日本語原稿を読み上げた動画シリーズ Readings for Japanese Study もありますので、興味のある方は動画の下の説明にリンクがあります。では、このレッスンの方法について説明します。まずは、DIG 東京のテキストのページと YouTube の動画をタブや別ウィンドウを使って両方ともすぐ見られる状態にしてください。そうしたら、DIG 東京の日本語のテキストだけをまず先に読んでください。次に、英語のテキストだけを読んでください。英語のテキストでわからない英単語や熟語をネット検索を使って自分で調べてみましょうもちろんわからない日本語があればそれもチェックしてください次に英語のテキストをもう一度読んでみてくださいこれで予習が終了ですここからこの動画によるレッスンを行いますこの YouTube の動画を再生させて英語を聞きながら DIG 東京の英語テキストを目読してください次に英語テキストを見ないでこの YouTube の動画だけを見ながら英語をよく聞いてください最後に YouTube の音声に合わせて英語テキストを音読してください以上のステップを繰り返すことで英語の表現力読解力ヒアリング力スピーキング力が確実に上達するはずです2回目以降のレッスンの際にはこの画面の下にある「もっと見る」を開いてテキストの朗読のところをクリックしてくださいすぐにテキスト本文を読み上げる部分に行けます。今回は Language and Ensembles 54 The One Inch Subtitle Barrier and the Culture Barrier Thoughts on the Award Season Success of Parasite 僕が出演中の語学番組の最新回で取り上げたテーマ「ハッシュタグオスカーズ」について振り返りました。楽しみながらレッスンしましょう。1 The Oscars attempt to modernize over the past 10 years. The theme of the March 13th episode of Sekai Hashim SNS Ego Jutsu was hashtag Oscars. We looked back at some of the interviews I've done for the show. Director Josh Cooley and producer Mark Nielsen of Toy Story 4, which won Best Animated Feature. Director Dean DeBlois of How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, which was nominated for Best Animated Feature. Director Quentin Tarantino of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Which won Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role, Brad Pitt, and Best Achievement in Production Design. The Academy Awards, held annually at the end of every February or beginning of March, is Hollywood's biggest night. The ceremony has a longer history than the three most prestigious international film festivals Berlin, Cannes, and Venice, and celebrated its 93rd anniversary in 2020. There are a number of theories as to how the Academy Awards came to be called the Oscars. One is that an Academy Executive Secretary took a look at the statuettes and exclaimed that they looked just like her uncle Oscar. Ever since, the ceremony itself has been colloquially referred to as the Oscars. Since 2013, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has officially referred to the ceremony as the Oscars, instead of the considerably more stuffy phrasing, the 84th Academy Awards. Over the past 10 years, the Academy has attempted to update and reinvigorate the stale image of the Oscars in response to declining TV viewership. It has tried to bring diversity to its largely white membership. It awarded the Best Director Award to a female director for the first time, Catherine Bigelow for The Hurt Locker. It expanded the number of nominees for Best Picture from 5 to 10, and it has attempted to designate hosts that appeal to younger audiences. The efforts have yielded mixed results. In 2019, Spanish director Alfonso Cuaron's Roma became the first Netflix produced film to be nominated for the Best Picture Award, 
Meanwhile, directors like Steven Spielberg argued that only films with the proper theatrical release should be eligible for the Academy Awards. Roma did have a theatrical release. Despite the Academy's best efforts, the 2020 Oscars marked the lowest ratings ever for the broadcast, following in the footsteps of the 2019 ceremony. That being said, winning an Academy Award is still one of the movie industry's most prestigious honors. This year, Bong Joon-ho's Parasite became the first foreign language film to win Best Picture, in addition to Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, and Best International Feature Film. The idea that an Asian film, in a non-English language, would win the most prestigious award at a ceremony meant to celebrate the Hollywood establishment is unprecedented. 2. The One Inch Tall Barrier of Subtitles After Parasite won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival in May 2019, it went on to sweep the 2019 awards season. Director Bong Joon-ho remained humble and self-effacing throughout, with a shy smile on his face but always giving eloquent, thoughtful speeches and interview answers. His demeanor charmed audiences everywhere he went. For many young Americans, it was refreshing to see someone with such an illustrious career being completely unaffected and unfazed by Hollywood. Korean cinema has come of age over the past 20 years or so, and it has established a reputation for quality films that have a message that extends beyond national borders. In an interview with the pop culture website Vulture, run by New York Magazine, Bong reflected on Hollywood's past indifference to Korean cinema thusly. It's a little strange, but it's not a big deal. The Oscars are not an international film festival. They're very local. When Parasite won Best Foreign Language Film at the Golden Globes back in January, Bong had a message for Hollywood and the American movie going public. Once you overcome the one-inch tall barrier of subtitles, you will be introduced to so many more amazing films. I think we only use one language, the cinema. For Americans, movies are not so much works of culture as they are entertainment. More often than not, they are pure escapism. For moviegoers looking to be swept away into the world of fantasy, subtitles are both a chore and a bore. It's asking your audience to do work. Only a handful of cinemaphiles are happy to brave traffic and ticket prices to see the subtitled foreign films. Those films are usually shown only in small indie theaters or on the dingiest screen at the cineplex in the half-sized room in the back that you didn't even know was there, where the seats are all at some weird angle to make the most of the space. And such screenings are usually almost completely empty. Director Miyazaki Hayao's Sen to Chihiro no Kamikakushi was first released in the U.S. in about 150 theaters with barely any promotion. There are a total of about 5,800 theaters in the U.S. When the film won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, at the 2003 Academy Awards, the film expanded to more than 700 theaters and grossed more than $10 million by that September. Of course, the film that was shown was not subtitled, it was dubbed in English and released under the name Spirited Away. The 2000 Wu Xia Martial Heroes film, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, grossed $128 million in the U.S., becoming the highest grossing foreign language movie produced overseas in American history. The film was an international co-production between companies in China, the U.S., Hong Kong, and Taiwan. But the film is centered almost entirely on martial arts battles. The one-inch subtitle barrier was not an issue to begin with. In these ways, foreign films released in the U.S. have always had an element that helps lower the barrier to entry for American audiences. That being said, the spread of video streaming services has made it easier than ever before for American audiences to be exposed to foreign films while few would go all the way to a movie theater or a video rental shop just for a foreign film, many won't hesitate to press play on an interesting-looking movie or TV show on Netflix, regardless of language. Last year, Roma was nominated for Best Picture and ended up taking home Best Foreign Language Film. This year, the next logical step was for a foreign language film to win Best Picture. A few weeks after the Golden Globes, while he was being interviewed backstage during the Oscars, Bong said the following, during the Golden Globes, I mentioned the one-inch barrier of subtitles, but I feel like that was already a little late. People were already overcoming this barrier through streaming services, YouTube videos, and social media. In the environment we currently live in, I think we are all connected. 3. Bong Joon-ho's Translator, Sharon Choi 
On the show, we also talked about director Bong Joon-ho's interpreter, Sharon Choi, whom the internet became obsessed with for her self-effacing demeanor and ability to translate Bong's words into a language that Americans could understand. Choi is a 25-year-old Korean who spent a couple of years in the U.S. as a kid and managed to keep up her English skills by reading books and watching movies. She studied filmmaking in college and is currently penning the screenplay for her feature-length directorial debut. In an article she wrote for Variety, where she reflects on her award season experiences, she reveals that prior to translating for Bong, she had only done about a week's worth of interpreting work in her life. She was approached in April 2019 to interpret for a phone interview that Bong was doing, and then asked again to interpret for him at Cannes. After that, and throughout the awards season, she was a fixture by Bong's side, culminating in her taking to the Oscars stage by his side. Choi, like all good interpreters, does not attempt a word-for-word translation of Bong's words. Instead, she interprets his message and uses a healthy dose of American and uses a healthy dose of American idioms and an American accent to convey not just what he's saying, but his charm and sense of humor as well. It's safe to say that she played an important role in making Parasite more accessible and intriguing to the American audiences. Bong and Choi even made an appearance on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Late night talk shows are how Americans unwind after a long day at work, and it is rare to see a non-English filmmaker or star appear much less one that was speaking mostly in his native tongue and using an interpreter. It's not unheard of for an interpreter on the movie press circuit to draw attention. Filmmakers, especially auteurs, are prone to ramble about their artistic vision, and an interpreter who can convey such ideas in clear, succinct language will be high in demand. The freelance interpreter and translator, Masume Lahiji, has been a subtly integral part of Cannes for years. She applies her French, Farsi, Spanish, and English skills to make sure that cinema isn't lost in translation. And all without even using a notebook. One year, she interpreted for the Iranian director, Abbas Kiarostami, and would subsequently translate for him until his death in 2016. Lahiji even translated and adapted the screenplay for his 2010 film, Certified Copy, into English. Japanese readers will likely be familiar with the subtitle translator and interpreter, Toda Natsuko. Ever since Tom Cruise first came to Japan to promote his film in 1992, Toda has been his go-to Japanese translator ever since. When I attended the Mission Impossible Fallout press event last year for SNS Egojutsu, Toda emerged behind Cruise like his shadow. Cruise, although small in stature, has a megastar's aura. Toda loomed perhaps larger, and she made no effort to tone down her presence. 4. The Culture Barrier Video streaming services and social media have helped break down the subtitle barrier and the language barrier, making it easier than ever before for us to watch content from all around the world. The question is, has it made us more tolerant or understanding of other cultures? Yes. Spirited Away and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon were hits in the U.S., but I doubt anybody came out of the films feeling like they learned something about either Japanese or Chinese culture. And while many Japanese people love to watch Hollywood movies and American TV dramas, the content only serves to reinforce stereotypes, and Japanese understanding of American culture remains outdated and highly limited in scope. It's important to remember that movies are just movies, not some magical tool for bringing about world peace. But at the same time, that's precisely why it behooves us to pay more attention to the effect they do have on our society. Even more so now that the subtitle barrier is coming down. Bong Joon-ho has said in interviews that the themes of Parasite are class strife and urban poverty, and he has furthermore said that such themes are not unique to South Korea and affect everyone around the world. That partly explains why the film did so well in the U.S., roughly $40 million. But have Americans truly learned about South Korean society? Have they learned to appreciate Korean culture? That part is much more difficult because the culture barrier, moral values, aesthetics, views on life and death, still remain. It's comforting when a movie shows you that we are all just human, that we all deal with similar things in our lives. We feel closer to each other a oneness with our fellow humans. The fact that Americans, the English, the French, the Japanese, and South Koreans can all cry at the same thing is powerful and undeniable. 
But no matter how much we shine a spotlight on our commonalities, we can only truly start to understand each other when we see the true nature of the culture barrier that divides us. Attempting to break down and judge another culture solely through the lens of one's own can be more dangerous than illuminating, especially when you find yourself feeling like you've figured the other out. Even if the subtitle barrier comes down, we still need to get up and venture into what lies beyond. Or to put it another way, we need a guide to show us the way. That's the role of a translator or an interpreter in the most general sense. I'd like to believe that Parasite's victory in America's appreciation for Bong Joon-ho and Sharon Choi mean that Hollywood is undergoing a seismic shift. But much like you begin to see a movie in a new light as you walk out the theater and make your way back to your car, when you reflect on the 2019 awards season, it becomes clear that it's all been a retelling of an all-too-familiar story. Hollywood loves a good fairy tale. 以上 Language and Ensembles 54 The One Inch Subtitle Barrier and the Culture Barrier. Thoughts on the awards season success of Parasite. No ego text or roadok しました。いかがでしたかこのコンテンツが気に入ったら、YouTube のこの動画の右下にあるボタンからチャンネル登録をぜひ行ってください。テキストの最後にある Facebook、Twitter、Instagram のアイコンから、DIG 東京の公式アカウントに入り、フォローしてください。ご意見、ご要望がありましたら、YouTube や SNS のコメント欄にご記入ください。www.digtokyo.jp